Two weeks left until Christmas Eve, and with that, welcome to another Advent Calendar video. Today we're going to talk about UI storyboard segues and how to use them to transition between view controllers, which is really amazing because you get a lot of stuff for free. But before we get started, let me just say that your feedback so far for the Advent Calendar has been phenomenal. So thank you so much for that. And now we are going to have a look at what the segue really does. And if we have a look at the documentation it says here that a storyboard prepares for and performs the visual transition between two view controllers this sounds mighty and it also is mighty and the most important function that you will encounter in relation to segways is the prepare for segue function that you can call in every view controller. And here we are also going to pass information from one view controller to another. And the other important function is perform segue with identifier that you can use to manually trigger a segue animation or a segue transition. So with that being said, let's open up Xcode and create a new sample project. I'm going to name that segue example hit next and create and as you now already know a segue or a ui storyboard segue is responsible for transitioning between two view controllers so i'm bringing up the storyboard and for my second view controller i'm simply dragging up another view controller here i'm coloring it the background color in a different color and i'm going to add a button that is going to trigger our transition between the first view controller and the second view controller. So I'm du double clicking on it and let's say show second VC. And what we want to do here is simply centering it, making sure that the auto resizing masks are set properly. So I'm deactivating all of the pins here. And then I'm pressing control on the keyboard and drag from my button to my second view controller. I can now select different kinds of segues. I'm deciding for the show segue. And with that, we're already done. We have our segue in place, which is uh, kind of this arrow here, this rep a representation of the segue. And if I press on one of these segues and go into the attributes inspector, I can assign an identifier. We could choose a custom class and we can also decide if this should be animated or not. And we can still change the kind of this segue. So in another tutorial, we're going to see how a custom segue is created so that we can decide how the animation exactly should look like. And it is good practice to give your segues an identifier so that we can access it later in code. So I'm going to call that second VC segue. And as you remember, we haven't written any line of code. We have just created the segue here just in the same manner as we would with creating an outlet with the difference that we dragged from one view controller or from one UI element to a second view controller. And if I'm now running this in the simulator, let's see what happens. And here we are. And if I'm now pressing the show second VC button, we get this nice animation without having to write any line of code. And if you remember the tutorial from yesterday, you've seen how to achieve actually the same thing with quite a few numbers of code and a segue gives that to us for free. So let's now have a look at what we can also do with the segue. Imagine we would embed our view controller here in a navigation controller. So I'm selecting my view controller, hit the editor menu item and tell it to embed this view controller in a navigation controller. And the cool thing is now that we automatically get a navigation bar and also our second view controller received a navigation bar and we still have our segue. So now let's have a look what happens if you run this in the simulator again. So here we are again and if I now press the show second VC button we also get a back button completely for free and this is pretty cool so let's now see how we can actually also transfer data from one view controller to another using segways so again we are um, adding a label to our second view controller right here and let's also add here information for this label, let's position it also in the center of the screen. 
adjusting the auto resizing masks. So I'm removing all of the pins here. And to be able to work with our label here and with this second view controller, we also need a new class for it. So I'm selecting my view controller class for the first view controller, creating a new Cocoa Touch class, and again, calling this second view controller a subclass of UI view controller. I create that and we go back to the storyboard and assign this new class as a custom class to our second view controller simply by going into the identity inspector and choosing second view controller as our custom class. And then we can also bring up the assistant editor for our second view controller and create an outlet for, not copying, creating an outlet for our label by pressing control on the keyboard and click drag from our label to the second view controller. And I'm going to call that info label and connect that. And then we are going back into our first view controller class and we are going to have a look at how we can pass information from this first view controller to our second view controller. And therefore we're just adding a function right below view to load and it is called prepare for segue. And here we can check which of the many possible segues you um, are going to perform. And we can do that with a simple if statement by using if segue dot identifier is equal to the identifier that we have to find in the storyboard a few minutes ago. And if I have a look at the segue and the attributes inspector, here's my identifier. So I'm just copying that right now. And with that kind of if statement, you can check what segue is going to be performed next and act accordingly. So if you have multiple view controllers to which you can transition using a segue, you can check here which uh, which view controller is going to be the destination. So here we have our second view controller segue. And if that is the case, what we can do is create a new view controller object based on our second view controller or based on the destination we're going to reach. And therefore we are creating a second VC object. And to get this second view controller, we're using the segue and its destination view controller. So we are accessing, accessing the destination property here and this returns a view controller. And then we can cast that to a second view controller. And we're going to put that, uh, that into an if let statement to check if this really works. And only if it works, we are continuing and directly use this unwrapped object, for example, to set the info label and text property to hello world again. And if we build and run this in the simulator, let's see what happens here. I'm bringing up the simulator. And if I'm now pressing the show second VC button, we should get an error. So here we are, we have a fatal error unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. And the optional value is actually our info label that does not yet exist. And if you have watched the video from yesterday about UI view controller and how we can um, transition from one view controller to another without using a segue, then you already know that problem and maybe even the solution. So what we can do to fix this is creating another property in our second view controller. Let's call that uh, info object since we're using a string. I'm going to make this an optional string here that we can use later. And then in view did load, we can use that string to name or to give a text property to our info label by assigning the info object. We could also check to also only do this if info object is not equal to nil, then we want to set our text label to the info object's content. And then instead of directly accessing the second VC, second VC in our first view controller and in the perform for uh, prepare for segue function, instead of using the info label, we're using the info object property and assigning hello world right here. And then we're building this, this works and we're running this. And now our application should work properly and I'm pressing the show second VC button and we get hello world right here. So this is how you use segues to transition from one view controller 
to another. This is also how you can pass data from one view controller to another using segways. And you could do this with any kind of object. If it's a string or your custom data model object, you can always use this approach. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.